In this lecture, I will discuss about building foundation calculations. How we perform the calculations on soil to get the bearing capacity of the soil. Before performing any type of construction on any site, we should perform soil investigation. Why we perform soil investigation? Determination of surface and subsurface soil conditions and features in an area of proposed construction that may influence the design and construction and address expected post-construction problems. Okay, uh, with the soil investigation, we'll, uh, we know that is it our soil is uh, suitable for the construction of so, uh, uh, construction of so, so heavy loads or or for example if we are going for dam construction that we will check that uh, is there any underground weak soil or weak strata are present this all information comes with soil investigation okay here are some pictures first of all this is pisa tower okay uh, after the construction of this tower it starts uh, setting on the one side and this is the again the problem of soil investigation uh, here these in the building cracks are appearing due to the soft soil present underneath here again the one side of the building completely settling due to the uh, very soft soil present here another example so the soil investigation is very important we take the samples from the soil uh, by different tests, by standard penetration tests, cone penetration tests, many tests of of geotechnical uh, uh, in, engineer perform, they give the report either the construction can be started on the on that uh, and on, on that soil type. So that's why soil investigation is very important. In the soils investigations required to evaluate an area for the construction of a project or evaluate local material as a construction material this is also very important uh, for example on some uh, some uh, some sites and uh, maybe on the in the locality uh, sand is present so you don't need to buy that sand you can borrow the the sand from that local area or even you have you also visit that uh, the local material available in what type of local material available in the market at uh, that con uh, construction site near that construction site so in the soil investigation we get field sampling and testing we take different samples from different locations where the construction will be uh, will start okay then these samples uh, either bring to the laboratory and the laboratory proper analysis is performed on the soil samples and their bearing capacity their different properties their expensive behavior uh, either the soil will shrink or expand so all types of analysis are performed in the laboratory then after performing the analysis a report is generated this report will go to the design engineer that design engineer will get the data from that so, uh, from that soil and give the suggestions and and the uh, type of foundations all types of things then depend after the report preparation which is given by the geotechnical engineer civil engineer or any engineer uh, which is working on that side planning and evaluation of field work are aided by knowledge of the mechanics of soil deposit formation okay then planning and evaluation of field work is performed okay by uh, by making the reference what mechanics of soils what types of soil deposits are present okay foundation it is the most uh, it is the bottom most structural element of the substructure we transmit this structural load including its own weight to and or into the soil underneath slash surrounding without causing shear failure or the bearing capacity failure sudden failure and excessive settlement this is the main purpose of the foundation we try to transfer the load of the structure to the soil without the failure of the soil and the excessive settlement contact pressure that is a very important terminology 
okay the contract pressure the pressure generated by the structural loading and the self weight of the member onto or into the soil immediately underneath is called contact pressure for example here here is a column in the column that is a load 1000 kN 1000 kN which is coming above from the uh, uh, upper stories okay here is a cross section that what is the cross section of this column that is uh, 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter or 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter this is the cross section area so 1000 is the load and the area is 0.5 by 0.5 so the contract pressure will be calculated as load over area 1000 divided by this is the area 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 that is 0.25 the contract pressure is 4000 kpa okay for example if the soil capacity uh, soil bearing capacity is uh, for example 250 kpa okay but the applied pressure is 400 kpa so this 400 kpa is much uh, pressure as compared to the soil so this will punch into the soil and ultimately the failure of structure will happen so how to avoid this failure we increase the contact pressure by making the spread at the bottom for example here same column okay same loading 1000 kilonewton but now at the bottom there is a pad is provided with with the area 2 by 2.5 this is just trial okay so same column uh, cross section dimension 0 0.5 meter by 0 0.5 meter okay so now let's see the contract pressure now the load over area 2 multiply by 2.5 that is the area the con contact pressure is 200 kpa so our uh, we have assumed that if our allowable uh, our bedding capacity of the soil is 200 250 kpa and the applied pressure is this so then this structure will stand on that soil okay without the failure so that is the basic philosophy of the uh, design of foundations on the soil again these are two important terminologies gross pressure and net pressure gross pressure means structure pressure plus our burden pressure okay i will also discuss what is our burden pressure if we subtract uh, from the gross pressure our burden pressure then we get the net pressure okay that is only the structure pressure so let's see from a simple example here determine the gross and net foundation pressure for the data given below here is a footing the load on the footing is 400 kilo newton including the weight of uh, its own weight and the cell weight of the footing is also included in uh, in this 400 kilo newton and the depth of the foundation is 2 meter the density of the soil okay on which the foundation is going to be constructed that is 20 kilo newton per meter cube that is the unit weight of soil and the footing size is 2 meter by 1 meter okay the area will be 2 into 1 is equal to 2 meter square so now first of all what is the overburden pressure the overburden pressure the pressure which is present on, on the footing okay here is a pad and there is extra soil is uh, uh, which uh, uh, used for the fill or which uh, will present on the on the top of the footing so this pressure is called overburden okay so here uh, the initial total overburden pressure at foundation level at foundation level this soil is already present okay so the to uh, total overburden pressure is 2 into 20 40 kpa that is the overburden pressure okay so what is the structure pr pressure that is the 400 divided by footing area so the uh, again gross pressure is structure pressure plus overburden pressure so structure pressure is 400 divided by area of this footing 400 divided by 2 that is the structure pressure plus our burden pressure 2 into 20 so our gross pressure is 240 kpa okay structure pressure plus our burden pressure that is a 240 kpa so for net pressure we subtract the our burden pressure from the gross so our gross pressure is 240 kpa we subtract the overburden that is 2 into 20 so our net foundation pressure is 200 kpa what is ultimate bedding capacity 
the soil pressure against which soil will not fail in shear and settlement will be within permissible limits that is called ultimate bedding capacity uh, why there is uh, most of the uh, settlement is the uh, settling of soil or the settling of soil uh, of the foundation in soil the shear uh, for example in uh, concrete the main property or the main strengthening property of concrete is uh, compression property means concrete can take uh, uh, compression but that is weak in tension so means the the main property or the strengthening property of concrete is compression compressive force similarly in steel in steel steel strong in both in tension and compression that is the property of the steel so what is the strengthening property of the soil the strengthening property of the soil is shear strength okay so so that's why the most of the time shear uh, shear strength of the soil is discussed the soil pressure against which soil will not fail in shear and settlement will be within permissible limits means when any footing is placed on the soil there will be not any uh, any much uh, settlements so what is the allowable slash safe bedding capacity this ultimate bedding capacity comes from the uh, <coughs> sorry from the testing of soil okay we apply the factor of safety on this uh, ultimate bedding capacity and we get the allowable bedding capacity or the safe bedding capacity the foundation engineer has to assure the safety against bedding capacity failure uh, uh, and for this purpose the ultimate bedding capacity ubc ultimate bedding capacity is divided by the factor of safety here q ultimate the ultimate bedding capacity uh, is divided by factor of safety to get the safe bedding capacity the factor of safety depends upon the soil type either it is a cohesive or cohesion length means uh, is there any cohesion is present or it is cohesionless Co cohesive soils are clay soils okay and cohesionless soils where the bonding is less between the soil particles that is sandy particle so our uh, factor of safety depends upon soil type either cohesive soil or clay soil or sandy soil or cohesionless soils or there may be mixture of both type of structure dam building or payment uh, type etc reliability of soil parameters etc etc so these all conditions depends upon the factor of safety usually the factor of safety ranges from 2 to 5 okay but at, uh, normally in the design calculations of the uh, for the calculation of safe bearing capacity as uh, 3 is used here is the uh, presumptive bedding capacity values of national building code means uh, if uh, at the start of st designing of structural members of beams columns slabs foundations uh, bedding capacity is not available okay then uh, this presumptive or assume bedding capacity values can be used for the design of building okay but before construction the bedding capacity is verified okay so for example if there is a clay and soft clay then you can use uh, maximum bedding capacity 1 to 1.5 similarly if there is a hard clay 5 for sand to uh, if there is a fine loose sand gravel rock okay uh, metamorphic rock so uh, uh, if your building is going to be construct on the very so strong uh, foundation uh, strong soil conditions like there is a rock so then the bearing capacity will be uh, high so these are the presumptive bearing capacity values failure modes so now i will discuss the uh, shear failure of the soil the soil underneath the foundation may fail in any of the following three modes individually or under a combination of these modes okay first one is the general shear failure second one is the punching shear failure third one is the local shear failure okay local shear failure is the intermediate of both means it is a just uh, the mixture of these two failures that is the local shear failure an intermediate mode of failure between conditions a and b 
who presented these failures first of all in 1943 terzaghi presented two failures general shear failure local shear failure then in 1963 wizik there is another scientist added another shear failure of soil that is the punching shear failure so let's see one by one what is general shear failure local and punching first of all general shear failure okay in general shear failure when the footing uh due to the uh, soil conditions footing uh, slightly uh, uh, or suddenly fail okay soil around the footing bulges out mean the soil around the footing bulges out okay and the failure is sudden accompanied accompanied by tilting okay here is a pressure over settle, settlement curve okay the foot uh, the pressure of the footing Uh, applying the pressure on the soil okay there is and the settlement uh, start increasing but at, at the certain at, at the certain uh, some pressure the soil fails okay there is uh, failure in the soil here is a okay due to the uh, general shear failure the soil also bulges and there is chances of the uh, tilting of the foundation that is a general shear failure second was the punching shear failure in this no bulging usually and no tilting stress strain curve is not well defined okay pressure and settlement will keep on increasing okay there is no well defined change just like here well defined change in the punching shear failure <coughs> here the com- the footing completely punch into the soil that is the punching shear failure the third one is the local shear failure okay slight heaving occurs okay it is the mixture of uh, previous both shear failures okay slightly bulging will also occur okay uh, punching will also there uh, ubc in uh, in not well defined from the settlement pressure curve means uh, bearing capacity here again in this also the uh, it is not well defined in this bulging is negligible but there is also uh, tilting so that is a local shear failure 